whenever you're ready, um, can you explain what you put together? Yeah. Um, okay. So our original project was porting Doom onto uh, Pic32 and rendering it on the PSP. Um, so to do that, we figured um, we need as much CPU power as possible, so we'd offload the graphics onto the DMA. Um, so to kind of start by testing that, we figured, okay, we'll start with voids because we already have the functional void code, and we can just then work on rendering voids. And so to get the uh, DMA driver, that kind of took a lot of effort and was very difficult to work. So we kind of eventually transitioned our idea from getting Doom to work to just getting voids to work. And um, eventually we were able to get um, a working graphics driver with the DMA. Um, so now uh, we could draw horizontal lines uh, with the DMA, which is pretty cool. Um, and so then we kind of set our sights on RAM chips because the PIC32 doesn't have enough um, RAM to be able to like really hold much data because we're using 16-bit um, color um, and so that is two bytes per pixel mm -hmm. and the um, PIC32 has a lot of pixels for a small, no sorry the TFT has a lot of pixels for a small PIC32 and so getting the RAM chip was working was important. Um, but then that kind of started to take a while and it was very difficult, very finicky to get working. And so eventually um, we are able to get it working, but not with the TFT. So we kind of changed our scope again to um, end up with like two separate demos, one with the working TFT and one with um, working RAM chip. Okay. Right. Yeah, so I can go into the first demo, which is the uh, uh, basically uh, TFT um, control with DMA. So um, the basic idea is um, for this demo is that we have a, uh, a frame buffer data array that we um, define in software and um, then the DMA controller uh, uses basically moves this um, data array into the um, SPI buffer of the TFT um, which is able to draw uh, images. So um, one of the first things we realized was uh, we needed to be in uh, frames mode for SPI because um, uh, we essentially had to be in this mode for um, SPI to realize that DMA was putting stuff into its buffer. And uh, one thing we had to do actually was uh, remove the uh, jumper here um, for the regular TFT chip select and uh, basically jump uh, a wire um, from the TFT chip select to a hardware pin, um, which um, would then allow for um, the SPI controller to control the uh, chip select line. Uh, so once we had this in mind, then um, our first step um, sort of how we approach implementing uh, DMA on the uh, with the TFT was to directly mimic the uh, SPI function calls that were in the um, the TFT master um, file that held all those uh, function calls. So um, the main things we need to implement to uh, draw pixels were um, the uh, I think it was the uh, write data and write command functions. And uh, our intent was we'd create DMA blocks that mimic these functions so we could um, sort of structure our code like that. However, we realized that it was going to be um, with the, um, the amount of blocks that we need to create, it, um, it'd create a, um, it would be too much memory for the PIC32. So we um, decided to um, shift our sites away from that. And um, another um, issue we had, um, we encountered difficulties with, was getting the um, set address window uh, function, uh, which we also were trying to mimic in the DMA. And we weren't able to get that working. However, um, since this function is only called once at the start um, of initialization, we decided it would be reasonable to leave that in software as it's a one-time overhead. So um, with these sort of two considerations in place, um, we're able to sort of revise our 
DNA approach, and um, it en ended up becoming really simple with just um, essentially one uh, DNA block we made to transfer the um, data from the data array into the uh, into the uh, SPI buffer, and um, this block transfer would be triggered on the uh, SPI transfer interrupt. So uh, whenever um, a uh, whenever an SPI buffer was filled, then we would uh, uh, trigger it to be sent to the TFT. And then, and then once it was sent, then another it would call the DMA again to be filled. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you want to demonstrate yeah. this? Yeah. So here's a little uh, demo um, of essentially just drawing different colors to the uh, screen, uh, and we we can only draw um, a we load the uh, horizontal we load uh, colors for each. Uh, pixel um, going horizontally and then it um, fills the entire screen so um, that's why essentially each vertical line is the same color uh, and you can see that um, essentially how it's implemented is just um, modifying the values in um, our data array which is uh, 320 uh, elements and um, we sort of uh, have software delays to, um, you know, create the time for this visualization. So, so this is being done with no CPU interaction. The is CPU, right? the CPU is change is doing the color, but not the drawing at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's pretty fast. Yes. Uh, I think it's probably it probably could raw output something like 150 frames per second, but I don't think the the TFT can handle the Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. definitely. Before, um, with the when we were trying to like, test things with the set address window, we were getting some uh, a pretty like crazy um, sort of like strobing, I guess you could call it. Okay. Because of the because of weirdness of it was not shift or it was not timing correctly with the we were we were like writing too many uh, colors. Okay. Um, and so we would. It would basically strobe between several different colors at, in a row. Very cool. Um, and in theory, so, so the theory is that when we would hook up the RAM, we'd be able to store one row for each, uh, or one row of color data for each row on the TFT. And so we could draw a reasonably sized image. Okay. Uh, I don't think you can, we can actually fit the full size of the TFT, but it's very close. It's would be missing 40 rows out of 240, okay. um, which is also the standard size of the Doom uh, Doom window, 320 by 200. Interesting. Okay. So that that fits exactly into 128 kilobyte uh, or one megabit uh, RAM chip. Okay. So um, and so this is the. RAM chip demo. It's not very pretty because it doesn't actually you know have no output to TFT or anything. It's just uh, sure, but there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. So yeah. the diagram is easier. We drew a diagram on the board. Okay. It's easier to see. It's basically there are uh, the SPI RAM takes four wires as an input, but the issue is that because the like the TFT. Uh, the SPI RAM has to be controlled through frame mode. Uh, the chip select would be in, would be norm, normally would be controlled by the uh, the SPI controller on the Tech 32. The issue is that in frame mode, it can't send. We can't send. Uh, we can't hold CS high for longer than one transfer uh, normally. So the solution we came up with was we. Reroute. Uh, we pretend we, we simulate the SPI channel acting in normal mode by using the uh, the CS the chip select generated by the uh, by the controller that here is SS2 uh, to uh, and we end that with the S clock. Oh, okay. Also in framed mode, um, the S clock is always running, so there would be 
normally there would be timing issues if you just if you didn't do this end um, because the clock would be always running even when you uh, even in, in this tiny amount of time between the or in, in between cycles of the uh, CPU so the CPU even uh, the CPU in frame mode could not manually control the chip select because the chip select would go low and the uh, SPI RAM would start reading a bunch of zeros right even if you haven't started an SPI transfer uh, if you are using a uh, hardware chip select so this that's very clever this solution will basically stop the chip select from uh, or stop the S clock from running even in frame mode though one issue we ran into with is the AND gate has to be fast enough so the initial AND gate we had in lab was available has a 20 na nanoseconds propagation delay which is about half of our uh, cycle time at 20 megahertz so which is 50 nanoseconds so the cycle the propagation delay would result in the the data being sent back being one the pick would read it as one uh, one bit behind so and when we expect when we get a 100 output we read 50 instead okay because we'd be reading we'd read an extra zero at the front of the bit string uh, and we'd lo we lose precision on the last bit so was the solution a faster gate the solution was we purchased a faster gate uh, which has a setup time or propagation delay of about two nanoseconds uh, which was plenty fast enough to get the uh, behavior we expected. Um, so if we go back to the command line. The command line is done in UART, with the UART uh, from the previous labs, uh, uh -huh. which is done through DMA. So we have to do a little bit of copying and uh, or copying the DMA state and returning it back because we use three DMA channels. Uh, when the UART uses two. Uh, when we initially set up the RAM, we make sure it's in sequential mode and we write 100 and, or we write 640 bits of data, which we would, this is just uh, count up by one. Okay. Uh, to, and because it's one, they're one, or 640 bytes of data, because, and because they're bytes, we have to mod it by 255 so we don't send too big. Uh, data is too big for the uh, one byte, uh, and the the DMA will read 640 bytes at a time. Though it doesn't print it out, we only print out eight uh, bytes because okay. we don't want to spend forever printing bytes, and it's not easy to print an array in with the format we're given. So it when we don't have the uh, I don't have a great way to make this bigger. No uh, worries. So as you can see, this when we put in eight, it reads from address eight, and it will read eight through fifteen. Sure. Uh, and if we put in any number up to six hundred and forty, so if we put in, it'll read uh, three fifty mod two fifty five. Okay. Uh, and if we, and then if you see, if we read at six at like 635 you can see that beyond the 640th byte it becomes garbage data okay which is just the natural state of the ram unless you zero every single byte on the ram so this confirms that the reads are happening yes properly interesting and we also kept the software or the the cpu driven reads um which also still work in framed mode because of the and gate um so you can see you could confirm that at uh, six at elements or at address six forty, that there is one twelve, and at six thirty nine, there should be one twenty seven. Yep. And the yeah, and then you shall uh, you can still read and write to the TFT or, or the RAM. Uh, you can still read and write to the RAM with the CPU. Uh, Sure. From, okay. From the provided code. Awesome. Thank you. Do you have any questions? <laughs>